Hey, I'm Derek. It's me, Derek. And this is Stop Skeletons from <laughs> fi Fighting. I'm here too. Who's this guy? I'm Matt McMuscles. You might know me from the Stop Skeletons from Fighting <laughs> channel. Yeah. Because I appear here quite a bit. And yeah. You, you appear and, on my and, channel. And quite vice a bit. versa. It's Spook Tober Owens of the Witch of the Witch Eve. When, you're on, when you have a YouTube channel, what do you got to do in October? Yep, you got to make horror videos. Spookies. Also, check out our Gene Crass Peripherals video that is not a horror theme. That's up right now. We uh, put a poll out on our Twitter and we asked, like, what would you want to see for uh, Halloween stuff? And the best worst horror remakes won. It was close, but that one won. And I figure who better than to have Mr. McMuscles here. I guess there's better people, but I'm pretty no. good. Also, just conveniently, you happen to be in town when we were shooting this. That's true, too. So you happen to be in town and you're the best. I don't know how to say it. I don't respond to that. It's like getting so many compliments, I don't usually get them. And also the third guest, of course, we got Matt, got myself, and Mr. Microphone. Hi. How you doing, buddy? How's it going? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, everybody. Oh, you took it off the... Sorry. You want okay, to... let's... You... Yeah, if someone wants to talk horror games with me, we, we did the uh, uh, mumbling with Matt yeah. about horror games. Uh, just like where the, the state of them, their past, present, and future. Yeah. So, a horror remakes, at first I was like, yeah, there's a Resident Evil one, and that's about it. But then you can really dig deep. It's quite a few. And I don't know that a lot of people, I think when people said, oh, horror remakes, you know, movies, it's like, no, there's been quite a few for games, but I don't think it's as big of a thing as horror movies. No. Dif all different kinds of remakes. A lot of remasters. I think this is gonna be kind of a loose interpretation of that because video games like to remake themselves. They also love to remaster and re-release them. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be kind of a bit of a broad definition of that. We'll talk about Silent Hill, of course, but I really feel like we have to talk first about Resident Evil. What do you call this game when you when you think about it? What's its name? Remake. Yeah, I know, yeah. right? It's, it's so a perfect. remake. Jump ahead. What do you call this? Re to make or remake two? I thought it was gonna be Resident Evil Two Remake. Because that's, that's what it. that's what Final Fantasy VII's called, right? This is just Resident Evil Two. They didn't give it another subtitle. Yeah, no, they're both. But Final Fantasy VII is, I think, Final Fantasy VII Remake is the official title. Yeah. But the Resident Evil One Remake is just called Resident Evil. It is. This is maybe like the most famous remake in horror, maybe oh. of video games of all time. Here's the thing that I really like about Resident Evil, the remake. Okay. Is that the original Resident Evil was already a remake of Sweet Home. Yeah. Which. There he goes. Should I talk about that? Have I talked about a sweet home enough on this channel yet? You know what? I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Get all your sweet home out. Sweet home's great. I have it right here. That's good. You know that sweet home's awesome. And it was Resident Evil started as a semi remake of Sweet Home. Uh, and the, the Biohazard, there's a commercial in Japan for Biohazard, has a, a remix of Sweet Home music in the background. Really? Yes. Uh, and that's really, really cool. That's all I want to say. I just think it's hilarious, though, that there was Sweet Home to Resident Evil. Resident Evil remake on GameCube, and then they remastered the remake on PS4. The game itself is is great, and no one's gonna dispute that. You could dispute that. I'm sorry, Matt. You are my guest. I would not want to do that to you. Uh, but I do believe most people agree that it's really great. I just love how dumb that lineage is. I agree that it's stupid. But like, remake to me, when I think about it, I'm like, still in my head, this is like the best horror remake still, like mm -hmm. in general to me. Like, are there ones that are better? I think it's kind of, you know, divisive. It's up to, to, to people to decide that. But to me, like, like nothing will really top that because it, it was the first remake of that scale in gaming, yeah. I think. There's like 70% new game here. Yeah. There's only 30% of the original game. What I love so much about the remake is I know that I know the mansion like the back of my hand. I never got to look at the map. I know where I'm going. If you were stuck in the mansion in real life, I you'd be fine, right? Yeah. You get out, no problem? I, yeah. Okay. I'd be okay. Um, no, what I love about that familiarity, one of the, the first time I played the remake, when you find Kenneth's body, mm -hmm. uh, when that room, that there's a hallway behind it, and like when you go in the main hallway and there's like another door like behind it, that realization like, oh, I know this mansion. And then suddenly, do no, I? No, you love? don't. And I think that's actually a very brilliant little thing. When you see that like, no, everything is different. And suddenly like, I don't know what to expect anymore it's to have even even coming into a completely blind i think it's scarier to have that confidence taken away from you yeah so to a certain degree i think that that's something the remake does exceptionally well especially when you're like you know what i'm pretty much gonna get what i think here's the flashy graphics yeah hey there's a red body on the floor i don't need to worry about that yeah. and then you get the that... actual like unexpected mm -hmm. Whoa, the game has changed in yeah. the heads of the Crimson. And, and the fact that there is not enough kerosene 
uh, in, in the, the game, mansion. Yeah, like in the game, there's like, you can't burn them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember thinking like, oh, it's so cool. The zombies don't clean up after themselves. You know, mm. oh, we're in GameCube now. It's HD. It's super good graphics now. They just, the bodies just stick around. That's cool. And then you find out like, there's a reason for that. Brilliant. Amazing. Mm -hmm. What about Resident Evil 2? Of course, the Resident Evil 2 remake. Oh. The Resident Evil 2 remake. They came out earlier this year. Resident Evil 2, man, I think overall, this is an, a, an outstanding remake and an outstanding Resident Evil game. But man, there are just a handful of like tiny little things. This is an interesting game. I just, so my problem with this game is like the Mr. X stuff. Right. Is amazing. Like that reveal where he shows up and moves the helicopter out of the way. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he's just there. To me, that moment was like, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. Because it was it was the first campaign. He he shows up in the B campaign. He's in the A campaign, and then he's just clomping around. You can hear him. It was like on par with like the dog jumping through the window in the first time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like drop the controller. Oh my! It was such a holy. It's moment. also the part of the game where I was like, I didn't want to play it anymore because I was getting actually too scared. Yeah. I, like my wife would go like, Why aren't you playing Resident Evil? And I was like. I don't know want to anymore. Yeah. It's too scary and too yeah. stressful. He's, but he's then there I, somewhere, but I'm not sure where. I don't exactly. know. He's, he's stomping around somewhere. He knows, he knows how I smell. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's such a small problem with the game. I don't think Resident Evil 2 Remake ever tops that moment. I like that he shows up kind of randomly uh, at a certain yeah. point when you ha you get a key and you have to walk by the, the, the star's office and he just like shows up. It's a very good reveal when he, because you're like waiting on pins and needles. When's he going to show up again? Mm -hmm. And then when he does, you're like, oh, that's spooky. And then it just, it never, the game never really, it just, it peaked early for me. I was going to say it's a really great game from like almost every standpoint. Yeah. I don't know, for me personally, I don't think it's the best remake. I really honestly prefer the original, like, because it did this. Mm -hmm. I really miss a lot more notes and flavor text for when you look at objects in the world mm -hmm. because the game doesn't really have any of that except for like mission critical items and notes. Yeah. But you can't just like look at a painting and get like that bit of flavor text that the original game had. So there's little things that I'm like, eh, I would love to play this game again with just a little bit of these little accoutrements that mm. I just miss from classic Resident Evil games. Yeah. But overall still like, is this an incredible game? Yes, of course it yeah. is. It's thrilling. It's it's really interesting to see like this new camera angle uh, viewed in, into the world of RE2 that you really mm. know. But I'm like, yeah, there's still one or two things I wish we were in there. It reimagined a lot about that game in, in super smart ways. What do you feel about the story on that? Because you, you, you do not, you just don't like the atmosphere and the flavor text and like the general uh, world building stuff. And you felt like the story was also a little lacking. Uh, you know, the story is, you know, pretty much the the same. Well, you know, for the most part, it's yeah. just like when you're remaking a game, it kind of was like leaning a bit towards like too much of what they started doing on like RE5 and RE6, where like the dialogue started getting less and less hokey. Therefore, for me at least, a little bit less entertaining and a little bit less interesting. So if a lot of the characters felt a bit more flat mm. to me. Like I found this version of Claire a little bit less entertaining than classic Claire. A bit more of a forgettable badass. Like, uh, I, again, I miss, the, I miss the original voice actress as well. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the voice actors were also kind of a big deal for me. Like, even if they got RE4 Leon back, I would have also liked that, but they're like, oh, that voice is too cool. I, I liked, I liked, know? I liked babyface Leon. Like, I think him being a, a dumb baby <laughs> makes more sense that, like, uh, Ada can, like, totally manipulate this kid. Yeah, yeah. Because he's thirsty. I, it's if you're gonna remake a game that's kind of cheesy and hokey, I like again remake the Resident Evil One remake still had that. Yeah, for me. When Barry says second late, you would have fit nicely into a sandwich. Yeah, is such a good wink nod, acknowledgement. But I also feel like Resident Evil Two remake and Resident Evil One remake. Right? When people wanted a Resident Evil Two remake, they wanted the one like they had on the GameCube, and it's like yeah. And it, I think that a Resident Evil to remake like the Resident Evil 1 remake would have been fantastic. It just didn't happen. And I think the development team said we were going to do that. And then at the last second, we were just like, no, let's go this route. And I can't fault you for that. Yeah. You're the development team. Like, you know, it, it go really, what you want. I didn't have a huge problem with it, but it's clearly like, oh, this is the Resident Evil 7 engine. Uh, yeah. But you just made it Resident Evil 4 style um, camera. Mm -hmm. that, that, that didn't bother me so much. I, I, but it's like, I guess when, when, I, when I hear you talk about like the corniest and stuff like that, it's so hard to do that authentically. Yeah, no, it is. And I That's think it too. was 
I feel like I, I understand what you say, but I think it was probably safer. There was so much riding on this. Yeah, no, it really was. And thankfully, because it was so successful, mm -hmm. and again, I'm not going to fall because you, you clearly made the right choice, I guess, yeah. that we're going to like, we're remaking another game that's probably RE3. We don't know. We're not, so, but it's RE3. And then Capcom just put out like something today or a few days ago that said, yeah, because that did so well and because Devil May Cry 5 did so well, we're going to go back to some old IPs now. Let's do Dino Crisis right. Let's do Power it right. Stone. Uh, that too. Okay. Power Stone. <laughs> Actually, mostly all of Capcom's IPs. Just any of them. <laughs> just like, close, pull one out. Darkstalkers. Okay, yeah. Sure. Yeah, Devil Kings. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> Now, concerning that uh, early, like, mid, all of the 2000s, really, um, of all those gritty reboots, remakes, reimaginings, there's a couple horror games that came out of it. Are there any other ones that are kind of leaning into horror that you know of? You don't yes. want to? Okay. Funny you should mention that, Matt. I have a great, bad horror remake remaster for you. Bomberman Act Zero. What? And this is a great example of like how a bad remake, when it comes from kind of a soulless or like a bad idea, and it's weird to put this on the list. And, it, and, and when it first came out, to, when it first came to me, I was like, that's actually a great example because Bomberman is not a horror series, but this is like the gritty reboot where they 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 took the story of Bomberman, like the original NES Famicom Bomberman, which was kind of dark when you think about it. Was it though? But, Game theory. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, no. When you when you win, uh, uh, when, when you beat Bomberman, he turns into he becomes a real boy at the end. So they they just kind of took that story and it's like, what if we just like just cranked up, made it even the Clive Barker meter? Yeah, exactly. Because I just thought Bomberman X Zero was just like I'm edgy, like super cool robot, and every, all the lady robots like me. No, you like wake up in a, a basement. Uh, in a cube somewhere no. and you have to like fight for your life so you can you can escape and see light again okay i didn't know and this they tried to make it a, a weird horror game it's a bad idea mm -hmm. um and not only that like there's no multiplayer it's a barman game with no multiplayer and there's only a single player campaign yours i think you have to play all 99 levels without dying and there's no saves or continues it's terrible it has no multiplayer yeah Oh, and producer Grace has uh, informed me Barman Act Zero did have online multiplayer, but didn't have not, did not have local multiplayer. So that was uh, uh, my mistake. Still messed up. No, and I, I don't want to make sure I misrepresent Barman Act Zero <laughs> for all you stands yeah. of Barman Act Zero. It deserves to be justly, appropriately dressed down. Uh, still bad. No, still not good. Yeah. So it's weird to think of that game as a horror game, but like, play that. Watch that intro. Watch that story intro. Tell me that's not some horror shit. I guess shit. I'll do that right after this. Yeah. I, like, I have memories of looking at Bomberman footage going, I'm not going to, in like nine years, talk with some guy uh, yeah. in front of a camera about this game. When you're friends with me, that's the kind of crap you get into. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Speaking of other of, of things around this era, what's, what's, a, what's a good example that we were talking about? Where it's like, maybe it's not the best game in the world, mm -hmm. but it's actually a pretty fun remake. What we got over in the pile. Splatterhouse, of course. This is maybe, it's weird to say this is a good remake because it is just such a, a huge, it's a reimagining. Reboot, is, it's a re-something. Exactly, and this is where things get kind of mushy, things get kind of broad. But I do think that like, honestly, when all this edgy stuff was happening, all this kind of horror and action was kind of all being blended together in, in the game space, somebody must have said like, hey, we got that Splatterhouse, we should remake that. Yeah, why not? And uh, you know what, I still think that game, Ain't no one saying Splatterhouse Remake don't got problems, but I still feel like that it very much got the core of the game, it got the style of the substance, it really was... Really good story stuff. And that's and that's the thing about Splatterhouse is always... You, can, you could describe Splatterhouse as edgy, the whole series. Yeah. But I've always felt, it always had a little more to say. It was like, we like gruesome monsters, I just... Not because they're spooky in this. Oh, your mom hates Splatterhouse. There's always a sense that, like, the team, like, that made, especially like the first three Splatterhouses on Genesis and Turbo Graphics, they just felt like games that were made by people who just like drawing monsters. Yeah, yeah they yeah. just love monsters and they want to make cool monsters. If he could, Todd McFarlane would have worked on this. Yeah, sure. One condition. But Splatterhouse, yeah, is is a is a very. We talked about how Resident Evil One carried the soul and like a good remake needs to have the soul of, the, of the franchise and so Splatterhouse I, has it yes absolutely hey 
Uh, Matt did a fantastic video breaking down the story of that game. I did a review that's kind of all right, like a billion years ago. Don't bother watching. I wouldn't have done that video if you hadn't done yours though. Well, then it was not. Then it was worth it. Being truthful when you say it's because like, is that game like kind of repetitive? Yeah. Is there bugs? Yeah. Are there an animation issues? Yeah. But like, the, like what we were saying before, the soul of the thing is actually the hardest to nail, and they somehow, even though it's Switch developers, I still think that that one kind of counts. Yeah. Um, no, it's, I, it's not I, high on the list, but um, you know, I'm a huge Splatterhouse fan, and any I think any self-respecting Splatterhouse fan probably should check that game out. And if you haven't, uh, it has the arcade version and the Genesis uh, Splatterhouse two and three. Uh, unlocked in the game so like getting the xbox or ps3 remake um you kind of get the whole set all of it yeah so you know it's coming we're talking about bad horror remakes remasters reimaginings what have you we have to bring it up silent hill hd collection before we even get too deep the silent hill hd collection it is only two and three just so surface level like there is more than just those two silent hills right yes Talk about a mess. Talk about <laughs> I don't a... even want to talk about this. Part. Yeah, it's just uh, it's so disappointing. I have seen people talk about playing Silent Hill 2 for the first time with the HD collection and being like, right. yeah, this is great. So on the one hand, maybe they're fine. The fact that this collection did that to even one person is kind of yeah. worth it. Yeah. So Matt, maybe you're like the expert on succinctly, concisely talking about no, all the I'm problems. Not. That's, that, I'm no, I'm not succinctly oh, good okay. at anything. But yes. Well, you, uh, you did. You, you, you talked about like the HD collection a little more recent than I have. Yeah, yeah. And just, just there's just the myriad of problems. Where do we even start? Just like you know, they did not. They either hijinks weren't able to, or they weren't able to get like you know how Blue Point remasters games where they like take the final code from like released discs mm -hmm. and able to backwards engineer it and look at that. Hijinks either had not the experience nor the time to do that but they were given un incomplete beta versions of Silent Hill 2 and 3. So a lot of things weren't even finished in that version that yeah. they were working off. So fog was scaled back, uh, uh, textures were missing. Uh, There's still just generalized bugs, like sounds uh, being mixed incorrectly, textures being placed here and there. Yeah. Uh, uh, performance issues, obviously, especially when fog decide, sorry, a light mist. Yes. Because that's the HD versions, uh, uh, version of that. So there's all these little technical things. And you know, if someone hasn't played these games for the first time, they might not even care that much. But when yeah. we're talking about Silent Hill 2 and 3, mm -hmm. it, they stand out as like huge glaring zits yeah. on, on an already like pristine, like bits of horror. Yeah. For big Silent Hill fans, it was like kind of just really, this is the treatment. Look what they did to my boy. Yeah. They massacred my boy. Yeah. But also, like, the horror fans are crazy. We are a crazy bunch of people. Can't You can't do it to them like this. Your video, what I did really like about your video, it felt like at the time when these HD collections came out, it was it was Tom Hewlett, it was uh, yeah. Hijinks. It was like these people, they destroyed everything. And you your video highlighted that like actually was really a lot of mandates from from Konami. And just being in an unenviable position in general. Like yeah. you have this amount of time, you have this amount of money, this is all we can give you. Mm -hmm. And just trying to make it work is still like rough on that group. In typical fashion, some people made some mistakes in the marketing and the PR, but still at the end of the day, it's like he and his team probably did the best they could. And again, like we're out there for the one person who's like, oh, this is the only, my only experience playing Silent Hill 2 or Silent Hill 3. Um, and that's great. But in terms of not even horror remakes, kind of like just taking a game as well loved and lauded and respected yeah. as just Silent Hill 2 and doing it this bad. Um, this I is, suppose it could be worse. It could. Like, it, it, it they could, could have messed it up more. That's a great that, way to think about it. It could yeah. have been even worse than that, I guess. But that's about all it you was can a say. C minus could always be a D plus. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts on Silent Hill 4? I kind of, the, the, not including Silent Hill 4 in this. It, was there any reason why that wasn't included? Oh, that's because it's Silent Hill 4. <laughs> and then the, no Silent Hill 1 because it's a PS1 game, so maybe And like, it was already on the PS3 store as right. a download, so they're like, eh. <laughs> they should have added that download in with the game. I don't know, it would have helped sweeten the pot a little, no. right? And they technically already remade it uh, with, uh, with Silent Hill Shattered Memories, right? <sighs> Very good segue. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, this is, you star Harry Mason. You're going to Silent Hill trying to find your daughter, Cheryl. And uh, that's it that's for, a, in terms of how much it has to do yeah, with Silent Hill 1. Sybil Bennett's there. Yeah. Um, but characters. Yeah, I think that game fits right in the middle. It is both a very good, it's both a good and bad. I wouldn't want to say it's very bad, but I I just don't like the ice, the, 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 the running stuff with the motion controls. I, I, I don't like it. I, I like what they were trying to do. With, mm -hmm. with Shadow Memories. I think it's an int I think it's a very interesting failure. All the game. psychological aspects of it are really interesting. The phone stuff is amazing. The lighting is really good. It's mm -hmm. very spooky. The story is great. It's got a solid twist ending. I it's really, 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 good really turns the knife on you. It's great. And I, and I also like that the idea of it's a combatless adventure game. Mm -hmm. Was I, it handled perfectly? I feel like that if that game had come out a couple of years later, it, you probably would have been okay. You would have been able to get away yeah, I think with so. having no combat, but 2009, I believe. I think Amnesia had just come out around that yeah. time anyway, but then all those combatless games, like the modern versions of them, like, yeah, like, like you know, uh, Haunting Ground and other mm -hmm. games didn't really have combat in the traditional sense, but like, they had waited and seen how other games did it. Could have been like, they could have nailed that aspect of it yeah. as well. It has one of the best flashlights ever. Using the Wii Mode as a flashlight yeah. and just the illumination no, and, and graphics. And also, you listen to stuff on your phone? Like, literally, yeah, like, bring, like a phone. Like the little the speaker. Wiimote. Yeah. <laughs> But like, no, that's like, people forget about the Wiimote had a speaker, which is normally, oh, I picked up a coin. But it was like, literally like, you would hit, you get a call and you'd have to listen to it on your, on your Wiimote. It was, and the I quality was, of the Wiimote speaker is terrible, which is great for Silent it Hill. It was perfect. I want it to be a crappy, it was perfect. Like, thing no. that you can barely hear it. Yeah, that game just, just it's a very interesting reimagining. It's um, the most interesting reimagining remake that's one of the most flawed. But that's yeah, that's really Silent Hill. <laughs> that's, that's what that's where Silent Hill fits in this this discussion. Uh, well, yeah, when you finish talking about, it, you're just like, eh, that's it's, that's Silent Hill. <laughs> you always start a Silent Hill discussion like, man, Silent Hill, and then <sighs> yeah, that's Silent Hill. So there's another uh, remake that some people might know of, probably few have played, which is uh, Tecmo. I, I guess Tecmo, but like Nintendo also owns some of the Fatal Frame franchise. Really? Oh like, yeah, I guess so, yeah. After uh, the Fatal Frame 4 came out in Japan, which unfortunately never got localized, and was that was directed by Suda51 actually, or co-directed by him. And that was a really good entry in the Fatal Frame franchise, and they took what they learned on that and remade Fatal Frame 2, Crimson mm -hmm. Butterfly, and I guess since it never got localized for North America, its official title is, of course, Project Zero to Wii Edition. That's the full title. For this Wii Edition, though, it's like they just, like, behind the back, third person, like, RE4-style camera, yeah. uh, new ghost, like, crimson head ghost, basically. Redid all the cutscenes, like, added more voice uh, voice dialogue and story bits. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a full remake, and sadly, it was just in that weird Wii era where Nintendo was like, ah! I don't know if we're gonna localize this mm -hmm. and it was just one of those remakes that a lot of people don't talk about but it was just really solid like they 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 went for it like it was yeah. almost like a remake and you like, know what scary game i'll say this about like fail frame 2 sharp looking game mm. like every single room there's no copy pasted rooms in, in very well designed game and i did really enjoy looking at everything around that game it was really sharp looking but that yeah, if they, if they changed the I just thought the pacing of the game was just a little kind of slow. And if they addressed some of that, I thought there was a lot of backtracking. I felt like that it was a big open world, but like you just kind of run slowly. The yeah, game doesn't the girls, give you. I call it the famous Fatal Frame girl trot. There's some in no ghosts. hurry. Yeah, in no hurry. Pokemon and, Snap, take that yeah. ghost, that let that ghost. Oh, be still my heart. Oh. <laughs> oh, but yeah, so, uh, Fatal Frame too. I didn't realize it was that big of a deal, or it, that, that substantial of a remake. It is, it is. Ah, it's a good one. There's so, I, that's, there's just probably so many good examples. Leave them in the comments below, this is a great discussion. We ended up talking so much about Resident Evil and, and Silent, Silent Hill. Hill. Yeah, which are the two big ones, there's a lot of good horror stuff out there, a lot of good uh, horror remakes and reimaginings and whatnot. And what are the good ones? What are the bad ones? Let us know in the comments down there. Uh, hey, let us know what you think about this video. Let us know what you think about our hot takes. Matting Muscles, the That's Flophouse. Me. That's this guy right here, he's got a great channel. Well, check out our other Halloween video, which is the Dreamcast Peripherals. <laughs> which, uh, but we also have the other Halloween video, which was the Kenji Eno. 
And then our, yeah, that was really cool. That was really you, interesting. And then our YouTube horror video, um, which was, that's a horror story, but not quite the one that I think most people expected. But thanks so much for coming on the show, man. No really problem. It. Always a pleasure, young Derek. You're yes. like a year younger than me, I think. So I you believe count so. as younger. Okay. And uh, check out, Matt's got some cool t-shirts. We as well have some cool t-shirts. It fits bodies. Yes. Uh, text you from the I element. have a Patreon. This video is supported by our Patreon supporters. Uh, all their names are here, and they're all awesome. Uh, Especially Matt, that one. Yeah, this one. And, but not that one. No, just kidding. You're all right, man. You're all right. No, all of them are good. All of them are great. Uh, we've had a little bump, too. So I'll, I guess, hey, welcome our new uh, Patreon supporters. Welcome. Uh, and is there anything else we got to discuss? Oh, yeah. Um, your mom hates Matt McMuscle's Flop House. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, wow, oh, she does? Yeah. <laughs> like my mom does, not your mom. My mom's like, you do such good work. Stay Garrett. away from that flop house. That, that Matthew, I don't like the look of him. He's got the piercing. I don't trust him. I don't like him. <laughs> I bet he has an expansion pack. Oh, he's probably got multiple expansion packs. In case one breaks. They're all stacked. Yeah. Okay, I think that's going to wrap this up. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Everyone get spooked, have fun, get some candy. And stay tuned. See you next time.